Hello, everyone. This is Sean from the Soccer Nostalgia blog. I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Jan Roscott as we discuss the match history between the national teams of Brazil and Holland. Mr. Roscott is the administrator of the Dutch soccer side. He has appeared before on the podcast discussing the matches of the Dutch national team. This interview is separate from a podcast series. This video interview will serve as a companion piece to a written blog presentation on the head-to-head -head encounters between Brazil and Holland. Hello, Jan. Always a pleasure. Hi, Shanan. Yeah, always a pleasure for me as well. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look back at the history between the two nations. The first match between the nations was during the 1952 Olympics in Finland. It's probably the least memorable match between the nations, despite the 5-1 scoreline and win for Brazil. This was not the main Brazilian national team, and uh, professionalism had, was a few years away in Holland. Is this match more or less forgotten in the sands of time? Yeah, I think I think it has uh, partly because of what you just said about the amateur status versus the professional status. I think that Dutch professional players, whom we had in France and Italy and Spain, were not allowed to play for the Dutch national team. So, as you said, it, it's not a really a, a reflection on the countries, but the fact that we lost five one tells you something, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know if there's footage of that. To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen it. I haven't. No. But the, but the next match, I have seen some footage. So the second match between the nations would be more than a decade later, yeah. in 1963. At this point, Brazil were double World Cup champions with Pele at his height. And the sides met in Amsterdam in May 1963 as Brazil were on a tour of Europe. This was the first time that the match between the nations was played on Dutch soil. And the Dutch earned their first win over Brazil uh, with a 1-0 scoreline. There are a lot of familiar faces for Brazil. You have Pele, Gerson, Gilmar, Amarildo, Zito. As for the Dutch, you have the likes of Benny Mueller and Hank Groot. Is this match remembered in Holland or was it regarded as an insignificant friendly? At the time, oh, I think it's remembered particularly by people a bit older than than, than me or older than us, um, because I think memories you probably know that better than me. It, it helps when you were there, uh, even when you're twelve years old and you've seen the match. You you do have that memory, and for me, it was of course before I was born. Um, but the thing with with Brazil is because of the Pele generation and Garincha and all those incredible names from the fifties and the sixties is that a lot of Football fans in the Netherlands, my parents or my, my grandfather, they revered the Brazilian team. So there's always been something mystical uh, and mythical about the Brazilians, the way they play their football. So I think winning against them, uh, winning against Pelé, yeah, that was a big, big thing um, in those days. And it was actually a pretty decent Dutch national team. I think if we would have taken international football more, more serious in those days, we could have done more. But we, as you know, we haven't qualified for the World Cup until 1974. We weren't there in 70, we weren't there in 66 or in, in, in 58. Uh, and we could have theoretically competed against the teams. Not that we would have won against Ballet's Brazil, but we could have at least competed. So this friendly gave us a lot of, uh, how do you call it, uh, confidence, I think, in our own abilities. It would be yet another decade again before the sides would meet. But it would be the first significant and memorable encounter. And it would be during the 1974 World Cup. Of course, Brazil were the defending World Cup champions, while the Dutch were led by Johan Cruyff during the age of Ajax and total football. The Dutch won 2-0 with goals by Niskens and Cruyff in a bruising encounter. This match is part of the legend of the 1974 adventure. What can you say about this match? 
I think this match for people my age or, or maybe slightly younger, but this match probably is one of the most epic matches the Dutch have ever played. Brazil or Germany or whoever the opponent is. And I think it has to do with a couple of things. As you mentioned, total football. Of course, in 74, we were sort of shocking the world with the way that we played. Um, I was 12 years old and I saw the first match of that World Cup that we played against Uruguay. And I thought it was normal. I, I thought the 2-0 win was normal and the way we played was normal. It was Feyenoord and Ajax used to play this style of football. And I guess later on in the tournament, it became clear that we were doing something amazing uh, or innovative at least. So when that Brazil game came, the semi-finals of the tournament, I remember that Brazil in my mind was glorious, creative, fast, dynamic, technical, just a brilliant side. And I think the Dutch were a little bit shocked that this Brazil was quite aggressive and physical and mean even. And I'm pretty sure we also had a team of tough cookies. You know, Johan Neeskens, you mentioned him, uh, Willem van Hanegem, Stubi, those guys could really lay on a, a tackle if they wanted to. So it wasn't that Brazil was evil and we were the saints. I think it was harsh from both ends. But us beating Brazil for a 12-year-old kid in itself already was quite astonishing. And then we reached the finals, which we wouldn't expect from the beginning. Uh, two magical goals as well, if you have the opportunity to check the goals out on YouTube. They're stunning goals, really beautiful moves. And for a 12-year-old, I guess what stuck most in my mind was that in those days, or today, I should say, when there's a little bit of blood on your jersey or on your eyebrow, you have to go to the side of the pitch and get a new jersey and whatnot. In those days, it was different. And the Dutch started in white. For some reason, we were seen as the away playing team. And Johan Leeskens' jersey was red at the end of the game from all the blood, uh, probably from him, but also from the Brazilians that he tackled. Uh, it was just unthinkable today that you could play like that. And there were so many fouls and like red cards. And, and today's game, I think you would have seen red seven or, or, or so red cards if the game was played today. It was astonishing. So if for a 12-year-old, this was an epic match. And then for us going into the finals, I think we lost the final, which is the reason why this semi-final is the epic game in our memory. If we would have won the finals, probably that game would have been the epic game. But uh, yeah, this, this Holland-Brazil was stunning. And Brazil was disappointing. And the Dutch rose even higher in everybody's perception. So yeah, it was probably a, a huge match. Also for our confidence to, to realize that we could actually be part of the elite in world football. As we beat Argentina, uh, we beat in Uruguay. Obviously Uruguay had won two World Cups by then already. So we were uh, doing really well. Very memorable match. So once more, it would be more than a decade before the size would meet again. This time, they met in a friendly at Rotterdam on December 20th, 1989. The Dutch were severely under strength, missing the AC Milan trio of Hullet, Van Basten, and Rijkaard, as well as the likes of Vandenburg, Erwin Koeman, and Johnny Bozeman. Ronald Koeman was originally supposed to be rested for this match, but with the absence of most of the stars, the Holland management were forced to ask him to play to have one of his genuine stars present. So the Dutch were a makeshift side that included four debutants, while Brazil was more or less at full strength. Brazil won 1-0 with Careca scoring with a header. And this was Brazil's first win since the initial 1952 match. And also their first and only win uh, on Dutch soil. What do you remember from this match? Not a lot. I remember that uh, there was all sorts of issues in the Dutch camp uh, with the coach Liebrechts and the, the, the Milan players in particular. Uh, and as you said, there were lots of people uh, absent. I think we saw some some third rate almost internationals making the debut. Um, yes. Sturing, who, who was a bit of a 
bull like fullback who could run like crazy, tackle like crazy, but not a great player. And I think there was the Latuheru, Latuheru. attacking midfielder. He, he was a, he was a gifted player, but not a national team player, I don't think. And and Fre- um, Stephen Berghaus, who's today in the national team for the Netherlands, his dad, I think, who was a left winger, I, I believe, made right. his debut. Was, Frank Berghaus, yeah. Yeah, Frank, or we call him Pico in uh, in the Netherlands for some reason. He, he this is his only cap I think he had for the Dutch. Um, and there were a couple of other fringe players that were involved. So I don't think it really mattered much. We didn't really care about it. We did qualify for the World Cup. We won the '88 European Cup just a year before, and everybody was just thinking, you know, let's just, let this World Cup start because this is the one we're going to win. Uh, and obviously. <laughs> We didn't. <laughs> so we come to the decade of the 1990s, and this would be the most prolific as far as the number of encounters. The sides met no less than six times, including twice in the World Cups. So let's take a look at each match and discuss. The first encounter of the decade was perhaps the most memorable one. During the 1994 World Cup in Dallas, Texas in the United States. Brazil won 3-2 in dramatic fashion. They had taken a 2-0 lead that included the famous Bebeto celebration referencing the recent birth of his son. Uh, the Dutch would stage a fight back and tie the match before Branco scored with a beautiful free kick. Do you remember watching this match? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I really do, and it was a strange World Cup because uh, obviously it was the US, so you had those those time zone issues. You also had travel issues, a big country, and, and there were stadiums spread out across the nation, of course. So it was a bit weird, and I remember that Ruth Fillet pulled out of the squad uh, maybe two, three weeks before everybody flew into the US because of tactical um, mis- not misunderstandings, but debates with uh, the coach, Dick Advocaat, Gullit, I think, at the end of the day, was right with his criticism. One of the things he said, it's going to be super hot in Florida and Texas because of some heat wave that was uh, predicted. Um, So we can't play this style of football. We're not going to be able to do that for 90 minutes. He was ridiculed a little bit and sent home. (laughs) Uh, But I think at the end of the day, he was right. It was a terrible tournament in our view because the group stages were horrific. We played terrible. And we just got through, I think, with a bit of luck, really. Um, and then when we played, I think we played Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. In the, the game before this one. Yeah. Uh, and we started to tick, it started to, to gel a little bit. And then against Brazil, we played a really you know, lackluster first half, as I remember. We got 2 0 down, maybe after an hour's play. Uh, and we fought ourselves back into the game, which was fantastic. And that's when I thought, okay, we can win this. And if we do, the, the way to the finals is open. You know, well, why why wouldn't we go all the way then? And with players like Rijkaard and Winter and Koeman and Overmars and Burkham, you know, the, this, you think we've got enough quality. Uh, and I think we did really well. And then the Branko free kick came, which was long for a long time, a huge nightmare or a huge hangover for the Dutch because we believe that it wasn't a free kick for Brazil. We believe that the free kick should have been awarded to us for a foul before that free kick on one of our players. So that was the first bit of issue that we had. And then secondly, I guess one of our defenders was blocking the eyesight of our goalie. Uh, not I can't remember who it was, but it wasn't smart positioning. I think it was potentially Stan Valks who was in the way of the goalie at the Hui. Uh, and I also think that he should have done better, the goalie, at the end of the day. Uh, it was not a very amazing free kick, but Branko, of course, had the reputation. He, he put a lot of spin on the ball. And so I can't judge really whether it was an easy ball to stop or not, but we all were desperately disappointed that we uh, conceded that goal. And then I remember Dick Adler, so we went home after this quarterfinals, and Dick Advocaat, when he was interviewed at the airport in Amsterdam, he was happy. He was great. We're, we reached the quarterfinals. That's fantastic. We are amongst the best 16 nations on the planet. And he was walking around like a peacock. And everybody was like, what the hell, man? That's not good enough. Top 16 in the world is the minimum. 
that we would expect. And you're not going to come home after being beaten in the quarterfinals with your chest out and telling everybody how amazing you are. I remember that really well. And as you all know, Dick Advocaat didn't have a very positive experience eight years later or 10 years later in Portugal when we uh, was the coach of the Euros in, uh, in, was it in, yeah, it was in Portugal with the famous Iron Robin substitution. And right. as a result, we lost the game. So Advocaat is uh, usually, well, there's an expression for that in Dutch, which wouldn't translate, but he's usually seen as the, uh, yeah, the, the, the pantomime villain, I guess, <laughs> in Dutch football. Yes. So just two years later, in 1996, in Amsterdam, I believe uh, this was the the Amsterdam Arena had recently been inaugurated. So mm. they hosted Brazil on August 31st. And it was a piece early season friendly. And this match featured Ronaldo just before when he was about to burst on the scene with Barcelona. So this match ended as a 2-2 tie with with a last minute penalty kick by Jean-Paul Van Gastel mm. as Brazil were ahead for most of a match. Do you remember this match? Not re- I do remember that uh, Van Gastel goal um and I probably if I see it again I'll probably remember more of it. Um but you know friendlies I'm I'm not really big on those I suppose. Uh, I do remember that, uh, was it, yeah, Van Hassel, did he play from the start? I can't remember. I think he did. Van Hassel. No, he came in, no, I think. He came in like the last seven minutes, replaced Wim Jonk. So right. he just came in and scored a penalty kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's it's interesting. But he was a, a, a massive midfielder for Feyenoord at the time. Uh, he was a really good player. A, bit, a little bit like Paul Scholes, maybe, if you need to compare him, like same height, sort of style of midfielder. But because Ajax was so unbelievably strong in those days, he couldn't get a, a look into the national team. And, of course, Feyenoord, well, not of course, but you would know Feyenoord is my, my club. So when he came onto the pitch and could score that final minute penalty, I was ecstatic for him because I thought that was really cool. Um, that, that's the only thing I really remember from that game. So then a couple of years later, during the 1998 World Cup, the sides met in a World Cup semi-final in Marseille. So the yeah. match ended as a 1-1 tie with Ronaldo scoring and Patrick Kluivert tying the match near the end. And Brazil would go on and win in a penalty kick shootout. How would you compare this in terms of the drama with the 1994 match? Oh, that's a good one. I think in 1994, we probably were the underdog and we probably were surprised that we could pull it back to 2-2. Um, and like I said, Dick Advocat didn't feel like he did badly. You know, we were proud almost that we were kicked out by the Brazilians. I think in 1998, we were a bit more confident about who we were and what we could achieve. Um, I find it difficult to compare both teams from Brazil I mean, they always have amazing players, so, you know, they're always strong. Um, but I think we had an amazing World Cup. That 1998 World Cup was good for us. Our group games were great. We, we scored the most goals ever in a, against South Korea. Uh, the, the cohesion in the team was good. Two years before, we had the Euros in England, and there was this incredible rift between the black players and the, the white players about payment and about respect and... Uh, things like food in the in the you know in the training camp. And it was all a drama. And then Edgar David said something quite um, um, negative about the coach. Right, and he was kicked off the team. Yes, exactly, yeah. kicked out of the squad. And he was pulled back in just before the World Cup. And everybody seemed to be on the same page. Everybody left that whole rift behind them. There were hugs and there were handshakes and there were apologies and and they were flying. So when they started to play against this Brazil, we we felt that we had a, a real chance. Uh, and then when Van Hoydon came onto the pitch, we believed that we should have had a penalty. Not because he came onto the pitch, but there was a cross, I remember, and he was about, he was a good header of the ball, obviously, as a striker. And he was about to fire a header onto the goal. He got a big push at the back. 
um, and we believe that should have been a, a penalty kick. I think this was in the extra time, actually. And that that was never given, obviously. Uh, it stayed 1-1, and then we ended up losing with penalties, which was something we never really did very well. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, this is one of the World Cups where the Dutch national team fans will say that we could have and maybe should have won it. Um, you know, the 74, the 78, there's this 98, and then there's 2010. So very patrio patriotic Dutch fans would say we should have had four World Cups now. <laughs> <laughs> I might be one of them. I might be one of them. <laughs> but yeah, it yeah. was a stunning game. And it was a night game, which is cool. The game that we played in the US in 94 was in the blistering sun, if I remember it well. Yes. This game was at night. Night games are always cooler to watch, I think of the colors and the lights and yeah i remember this game really well it was an amazing game but also an amazing brazilian team all those names on the on the sheet there it's great the sides face one another in three friendlies in the year 1999. in june 1999 the dutch traveled to brazil for the first time and uh, they met brazil in in matter of days. So the first match was on June 5th and it ended that ended as a 2-2 tie. And uh three days later on June 8th, Brazil won 3 1. And this is around the time when uh Frank Reichardt has become the manager after the World Cup and he's uh preparing the team for the 2000 Euros. So the sides would meet again in October 1999, again at Amsterdam, at the Amsterdam Arena. And just like the 1996 match, it ended as a 2-2 tie. Do you have any memories from these matches as they were all friendlies? Yeah, well, slightly. I can't say that I've got really vivid memories. I remember Frank de Boer scoring an own goal in Brazil. I think it was in the 3-1 loss. Um, and I also remember Peter van Vossen, who was one of my favorite players, picking up the penalty kick. I think, was it a penalty kick? Uh, uh, the... No, he scored in a 2-2 tie. It was a regular yeah, goal. Yeah, he scored. Yeah. That was a regular goal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I always liked to see him play. He, he had no fear. You know, he had all the confidence that you needed. He was quick. He was one of those players that people didn't pick up on the radar when he was developing himself. I think he he came through the youth system eventually through Belgium, um, right. and and then he couldn't be voided or ignored anymore. He was he was quite good. But the, the game in October, I can't really remember. I just have to have a uh, like a memory shake up to remember who's. Do you remember who scored? Well, Burkamp scored and Zenden. So the Dutch had a two zero lead before oh, halftime. Yes. And then yeah. in the second half, Roberto Carlos and Cafu scored to give Brazil. Yeah, the time. yeah, 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 yeah. This is with uh, Ronaldo and Rivaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't say that I remember the game. I can't. Right, but uh, in general, these matches in the nineties stand out for the talent in display. It was the age of Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Roberto Carlos, Bergkamp, yeah. the De Boer brothers. Clivert, Seedorf, and Van Nistelrooy. Van yeah, Nistelrooy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. as spectators, we got the best we could from these matches in this decade. Do you agree with that, or? <laughs> yeah, I, I I would agree with that. I think definitely amazing. Every position on the pitch, whether you were looking at Brazil or at Holland, on every position there were outstanding players. I mean, Roberto Carlos, I was talking about him the other day uh, with someone when I saw some highlights. He was the left fullback. And his skills are just from another planet. You, you can yes. you can create a highlight reel of an hour or so yes. with stunning stuff. And he was just their left back. In any yes. other country, he probably would be the playmaker or the number 10 yeah, or whatever. Yes, um, Amazing yeah. career, yeah. Amazing career. And then I think in this match, Ronaldinho must have been there as well. Um, so you had Giovanni Albert, you had Rivaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Janinho, probably. Cafu, yeah. of course. 
And they started to have really good goalkeepers as well. Like in 74 and in 82, I remember that they always had goalkeeper issues because everybody in Brazil wants to be a football player and not a goalie. Um, but look at them today. They're, I think there's like eight amazing goalkeepers from Brazil everywhere on the planet uh, at top level. But the Dutch as well, you're right. I think we had Kluivert, we had Bergkamp, we had Seedorf, we had the Boer brothers. Van Nistelrooy probably wasn't even a starter in those days. Right. So, uh, yeah, a lot of amazing players at display, at, uh, on display. And, of course, also with the World Cups from 98 onwards, the, the whole uh, broadcast quality improved as well. More yes. and more cameras, sharper images, the pitches were better. Um, whereas back in the 19, what was it, 1970s and even in the 80s and 90s, you were still able to do stuff to your football pitch. So when Ajax played uh, in the Champions League away, the opponents would let the grass grow higher. So the ball would be a little bit less fluidly um, flowing from player to player just to stop Ajax from playing their game. Those things are not possible anymore today, I guess. It's all even even now with all those sort of things. It was a great uh, yeah, great decade for, uh, for this kind of game. Wow. Yes. The sides would meet three times during the decade of 2010s that mostly favored the Dutch and most importantly, twice in the World Cup. So the first one was during the South African World Cup in 2010 on July 2nd at Port Elizabeth. The Dutch won this match 2-1 and... This was the, their first win over Brazil since the 1974 World Cup. Was this the confidence boost that set the Dutch on course to reach the final that year? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a really interesting one, the 2010 World Cup. Because looking at all the players we had, it was clear that we were going to be a favorite. If you look at the qualifications that we went through to get to the World Cup, we broke record after record. I don't think we dropped a point. We scored a lot of goals. Every opponent was just brushed aside with top quality people. But it was all about, well, not all about, but Iron Robert played a very important role. And I think just before this World Cup, he got injured. And that got us really, uh, like gave us a drop in our confidence somehow. I think a lot of people said, oh, if Robin is injured, then forget about it. You know, he's the key man. Um, so we went into the World Cup a little bit more cautious. I think Bert van Marwijk decided to use two defensive holding midfielders, Nigel de Jong and Mark van Bommel, where in the qualifications he used Raphael van der Vaart more. He was a bit more creative. So we started the World Cup a little bit uh, rusty. Uh, the, the group stages, we didn't play well. We won the games, but we didn't play well. Got a lot of criticism. Uh, from Johan Cruyff and from Willem van Hanegem, all the big legends, they all felt that the, the team wasn't creative enough. And that sort of became a wet blanket on, on that whole tournament. And I can't remember the name of the country we played in the first knockout stages. It's probably not Slovenia or something like that, or Slovakia. Slovakia, One of the, probably, yeah. Was it Slovakia? Yeah. And, and on paper, that was the easiest opponent for us to get. So everybody was like, oh, great, we've got Slovakia, we can easily beat them. It was a very, very difficult match. We could have easily lost that. And then against Brazil, as you may remember, the first half, they played us off the pitch. We were not ourselves. We were nervous. We, we gave them way too much respect. But they only scored once. They could have scored four times. And crucially, I think Stecklenburg, our goalkeeper, stopped an incredible attempt by Kaká. Just before halftime, I think he just tipped it out of the top corner. Uh, and everybody probably was already cheering when the ball was in the air. I think even Kaká thought that he scored that goal. But it was tipped out of the out of the goal. We went into the halftime, one nil down. And legend has it that Snyder at that point in the dressing room was so angry where he said to the rest of the players, you guys, I was, I'm not going to use you know, bad language here, but... He used bad language. You, you guys are mucking up my World Cup. You guys are not playing at your top potential. And, and I don't like it. I need you to step up. Because if you play like this in the next 45 minutes, you can pack your bag and go home. And we will talk about this bloody mess for decades. 
So step up to the plate, play to your strength, and let's beat this opponent. And then Bet for Marwag famously said, you guys might be down, but the guys in the other dressing room, the Brazilians, they're probably even more down than we are because they should have scored four times and they didn't. So now we're going to go back out there and we're going to score a couple of goals. So that's what happened. Um, and the funny thing is I think Snyder scored with a header, the smallest player on the pitch. <laughs> so it was quite a dramatic win for us. It was a red card, I think, for Brazil as well. They lost their... Uh, composure a little bit and uh, yeah we went on to uh, reach the finals and then we screwed up in the finals <laughs> as we do <laughs> so the sides met each other the following year in a friendly on june 4 2011 at goyana this was an uninspiring scoreless tie for a dutch side that was on a tour of south america where they also played uruguay I it was with Van Gaal, yeah, was it? Yeah. This was, yeah. It, no, it was, it was still with Van Marwijk. Oh, was it still Van yeah. Marwijk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of those end-of-the-season tours that they sometimes do. Yes. So these players have had this massive season, and then you have to go. You can't say no, because that's a cross behind your name. So you have to go along, and it's more like a holiday trip than anything else. It's just, you know, being on the beach and having fun, playing a couple of games, and, and that's it. Now we come to the final match to date between the nations. And this was, again, in a World Cup match uh, at Brazil. Uh, Brazil, as World Cup hosts, faced the Dutch for the third place match on July 12, 2014, just days after suffering the 7-1 to home defeat against Germany. An already demoralized Brazilian side lost again 3-0. This win was also the first Dutch victory on Brazilian soil. It was an inconsequential match that confirmed the positive World Cup for the Dutch. What do you recall from this match? Yeah, I recall it. I, I can remember it really well, also because of the context. And you mentioned already the 7-1 loss that they had against Germany, of course. And when the Dutch went into this World Cup, the analysts and the pundits and the experts, between quotes, in the Netherlands was so negative about the Dutch national team and our chances that some of them even said, we shouldn't go. But we're getting humiliated. We shouldn't go to the tournament. There's nothing for us there. Uh, there's no way that with this squad we're going to ever win anything. And I guess Louis van Gaal sort of confirmed this by changing our 4-3-3 system, which we usually play, into a five at the back system, which is like cursing in the church in the Netherlands. You know, we're total football, we're 4-3-3, we play attractive, attacking football. Anyone who would then come and say, let's play with five defenders, would normally be driven out of the country. But Louis van Gaal, of course, you know, being him, he could get away with it. But there was a lot of um, um, sarcasm and people laughing about the Dutch team. And the first match we played, as you can remember, was against Spain in the group stages. Spain was world champion. They beat us in 2010. So are we going to get our revenge? No, we're going to get hammered by them. Uh, and we ended up winning 5-1. So the experts were suddenly silenced. And the team really got a boost from that win against Spain. And the fact that we reached the semifinals was way more than anyone would have expected, even Van Gaal. I don't think anyone within the Dutch camp would have expected that, you know, to get that far. And, and even the semis against uh, Messi's Argentina, um, nil-nil. You know, they got a couple of little chances. We got a couple of little chances. But we could have won that penalty shootout, obviously. It's like a lottery, as you know. And we could have made it to the finals, even. Um, but we didn't. So we ended up in a semi-final against, or sorry, uh, loser's final against Brazil, which usually Brazil playing at home, you, you would worry about that game. So I actually believed that Brazil was going to come out of the traps with full vengeance and knives between their teeth and whatnot to set the record straight for the home fans and beat the hell out of the, the Dutch. 
but they were nervous. They yeah, they confidence. were completely demoralized after that. Completely loss. demoralized, oh. absolutely. Yeah, they 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 probably didn't want to play this game even. Um, and we got a very early break with a penalty kick in the I don't know first five minutes, I believe. Um, and then Robin van Persie, you know, he's going to score that. He's he's, he's not going to miss. Um, and and Daily Blind got his goal with his right foot. Uh, he's a full-on lefty. Daly had a great World Cup. He had two major assists in the Spain game that put him on the map. And then he had this goal against Brazil, so that got him his transfer to Man United. Uh, and I think Gini Wijnaldum scored a late goal even. So yes. winning against Brazil in Brazil and winning a bronze medal when no one expected anything it's just a high point, I think, in the history of the Dutch. And it's the first and probably last time that we're going to be happy with a bronze medal. So, in closing, let's look at the balance of these encounters. Strictly in terms of numbers, they are even. Four wins for each side in 13 matches. There was a long gap between the meetings, uh, between these nations, that kind of picked up in the 1990s and onwards. Five out of the 13 matches have been on neutral venues. In total, the sides have met six times in official matches, with five of them being in the World Cup. In these five World Cup matches, the Dutch have been victorious in three. Uh, Brazil has not defeated the Dutch since 1999. And these last few encounters have been better for the Dutch. Overall, how do you look at these encounters? I would say they've rarely been disappointing matches to watch. What do you think? I agree. And I think there's a lot of uh, respect from the Dutch towards Brazil. Brazil has always been one of the favorite countries for most uh, Dutch people because of you know the, the, the attractive style of football obviously sits well with the Dutch people. So we, we always love playing against them or seeing them play. Um, we also had the likes of Romario and Ronaldo, of course, in the Netherlands. So there's always that kinship a little bit. And I think from the Netherlands perspective, Belgium is always fun because they're our neighbours, sort of speak the same language. A lot of players from Belgium played in Holland and vice versa. You can easily drive to Belgium, you know, like in the US, if you want to go to Mexico, probably takes you a couple of days to get there, maybe wherever you live. Uh, or depending on wherever you live. In Holland, you know, two hours and you're in Belgium. Then there's Germany and there's always that rivalry, also sadly because of the war and all that sort of thing. But Holland, Germany is always huge. And then there's Holland, Spain, also because of the Barcelona, Ajax connection and the Cruyff connection and the fact that still a lot of Dutch players love playing there. But Brazil is in that list as well. I think those are the the games that everybody is looking out for. Um, so, yeah, I think we feel kinship with them for some weird reason. Their outfits are great too, won't you say? <laughs> it's the canary yellow. Yeah, it's a, it's a shared history of technique and uh, beautiful play. So all that counts for something. With that... I'd like to thank you for this interview and sharing your memories of these matches between Brazil and Holland. You're welcome. And, and also, I would like to let everyone know to read the main blog article as well for more detail. Uh, the link is included on the video upload description along with our respective contact information. In addition, I will also upload a compendium with all the lineups, so, as many photographs and video links of the matches, if available. So thank you and hope to continue these discussions on the history of Dutch football with you. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Uh, you know where to find me. Yes. Always happy. Thank to you. Help. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. And thank keep you. on uh, going with the good work. It's always uh, very interesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.